You were very plump today. I got a boob job done. That this would not, not happen to be my toilet paper. This is not your toilet paper. We're going to make it through this live stream. She's trying to steal my white gold. I am not. I'm not trying to steal your white gold. I would never do such a thing. Those are very, very like, it's a new shell. Why do your nipples have holes? <laughs> They're introverted nipples. <laughs> They've been that way my entire life. Haven't you noticed before? I think you're just a little sensitive. Don't call me sensitive! <clears throat> what do you think? My, you can have the toilet paper. Just take that in your shirt. You're crazy. You're crazy. You know, this, this stuff can get you in a lot of trouble in the grocery store, mm -hmm. in parking lots. That's why we keep it to ourselves. <laughs> It is, this is magical stuff. So I hear that with the COVID virus that we need 500% more toilet paper <clears throat> in storage now in our homes than what we did a month ago. Because suddenly we're pooping more than I guess. we've ever pooped I mean, before. the average, I heard also that toilet paper companies are, are being pushed to make about 20% more toilet paper right now than what they were just a few weeks ago. And that's a lot of strain on like, they're not going to be able to produce at that level. My daughter was just out at the store, and she arrived at the store 15 minutes after they had unloaded and stocked and opened their doors. And guess what is not in the store? White gold. White gold. And, and did you know that 10 rolls of toilet paper on Etsy cost you $46.74? Plus shipping. Yes, you can buy toilet paper on Etsy. Really? Double ply. Double ply of the good stuff. The, the good stuff. stuff. Double ply on Etsy, $46.74 and, and $46 for 10 rolls on Etsy. That's crazy. That is crazy. It's crazy. And you know that other countries are laughing at us right now with our toilet paper situation. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. But it actually, it really kind of it is what our topic about, is about today. It's not about toilet paper, but it is about like no, the pressure cooker of like, like the fact that here's the deal. People can't find this right now. There are and, and, there's, and there's no rest. baby wipes. There's no diapers. <clears throat> there's no feminine hygiene products. Well, there's tampons, but there's no pads. There's no, there's a Kleenex shortage now. There is a paper towel shortage. So everything that, that we can wipe our butts with, we have now cleared out. So there are literally people out there with garages full, probably, maybe even storage units mm -hmm. full of toilet paper. I, last, this morning, I was having my morning cup of coffee and looking through in the new website that's out that you can go on and you can estimate how many rolls of, you put in, how many <laughs> rolls of toilet paper you have, you put in how many people are in your house, how many times you use the restroom, what sex the person is, so that they can count, you know, calculate how many bowel movements mm -hmm. you have and if as women use toilet paper for your for other, nation, yeah. and men don't typically. So that all of this, and you estimate it all out, and it calculates how much toilet paper you need for eight weeks of quarantine. And it was shown on there that the average user of this website has 500% more toilet paper than what is needed. Not 20% more, no, not 50% more, 500% more toilet paper. 500%. Meanwhile, there are people that are actually sick that have children, that the elderly, you know, we're all guarding the elderly, but guess what? We will battle the little old lady for four rolls. I this. saw actually a, a post about somebody, his wife had just had like massive surgery, and so they actually needed the toilet paper for more than just, just bowel movements, they needed it for other, because she was having more bodily functions and blood and things right. like that, and... There was a little old lady, and he ended up splitting an entire pack with this woman because the woman's like, "That I need the like." It was an older right. woman, and she was like, "I that's splitting." I think, that's sharing. I'm like, that's sharing. That's beautiful, but most people are going into mine. 
yeah. mode. And it's the mind mode, the fear, the panic, all of this stuff that's being I just heard the story about here in Texas, this lady purchasing the, the um, one of our grocery stores got all their toilet paper brought in. And this woman comes in and she and her, her group of people come in and they purchase all the toilet paper that they possibly can. They load it up on the truck and somebody said, what are you doing? Like, you should save some of that for, the, there's other people that need toilet paper. And she looked at the woman and she says, mind your own effing business. And I was like, you don't, so she, this person comes in and purchases all the toilet paper in there. Now we actually have legal, <laughs> we are getting only one pack of yeah. toilet paper, you know, 12 rolls or, you know, of toilet paper. Yeah, our have. government is having to come in and say, we're only allowed one pack of toilet paper. Yeah. And I thought that we were a little bit more intelligent, just a little bit more. I actually gave us human beings just a little bit more of the intelligence spectrum. But here we have intelligent people fighting, killing over toilet paper. Guess what? There's other ways to wipe your butt. I'm going to take the Japanese view on this and I'm just going to like, you know, like there's water. There's, there's water, water. There's, there's wash cloths. There's, there's, all there's lots. Enemies. We made it centuries before this shit was. I know. I know. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But it's a pressure cooker and that, like it, and it creates it more stress. This creates stress. And, you know, I was just, we were just looking at, you know, what is our topic today? And laughing at the fact that we suck at social distancing between each other, but we're around yeah. each other all the time. So we're, we're kind of like, yeah, like if you've got it, I've already got it. If I've got it, you can, like, yeah, it is what yeah, it is. Yeah, we see each other daily anyway, family stuff. But, um, no, we were just looking at the rates, and I've been preaching about it all since this really has turned here anyway with the United States, but that the real epidemic is the, the pressure cooker, the rice Thanks. cooker of what this what the virus has created, and that, you know, the majority of people are self-quarantining. Like, we don't even have a whole lot of mandate going in. California no. has a little bit. New There's York, New York has, has some going in. Seattle is on a pretty good lockdown for the most part, but actually, really, I just talked to somebody in Seattle, and it's pretty much the same as what it is here in Texas. So walk around. As far as like, yeah, there's not there's not a um, mandate going on yet there, like in San Francisco, where things are really, really locked down. Gotcha. But the sad thing that is happening is that there's so much violence starting to take place. The whole, yeah, domestic violence. The violence, the suicide rates, oh my the gosh. homicide rates, all of that has skyrocketed so since this started. Worldwide, we have less than 9,000 deaths from the coronavirus that we are linking to the coronavirus. And that is highly debatable in yeah. that because the science isn't even out there yet. We don't even have the testing. Nobody's even asking the proper questions around it. But that's a whole nother topic. And that, so we have, let's just look at, like, we have 9,000 deaths worldwide. And I want, I actually am later today because I haven't done my personal live stream yet and I haven't done my article yet. And I am a numbers fiend. Mm -hmm. I get into the data on stuff. I really would like to know how much, what the suicide numbers are for just this last 30-day cycle and yeah. what the domestic, domestic violence, violence numbers are for this last 30-day cycle and what the child abuse rate is at over the last 30 day cycle since people have really gone into self quarantine. Because I know what I'm seeing on the news that's actually not being reported on, on media. You have to go and look for it and actually you know research it, but that those numbers are all skyrocketing. They're skyrocketing because people, skyrocketing. people are stuck in their homes and they're, they're, even if they're not technically stuck in their homes, there's, a lot of couples where it's like one is like no you can't go out and like they actually get into these fights it's like it's like no you're gonna bring it to where me. there wasn't or, domestic violence there is, is now, now domestic violence where there wasn't where child abuse there now they're stuck with their shit child there is you know there's a lot of children and stuff and i mean that the the i proclaim that we're going to see at, in the united states and i'm not speaking for other countries because i don't know exactly like, I know that in Italy they are doing some beautiful things, but I'm sure that there's lots of violence that is taking place yeah. there too because us human beings are human beings no matter where we live, no matter how we were brought up. But they are singing to each other. They are very community and a lot more heart-centered in Italy than here in the United States. In the United States, we're more, we are naturally 
more distant from each other. Mm-hmm. So social distancing, we have that pretty much a lot of that. area are good at that. distancing ourselves from people. But what that distancing has done is that now, much like the holidays, we sit in in there, you know, during... We all know that divorce, suicide, that domestic up. violence, and child abuse all goes up during Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. Yep. And, and, you know, and the it's... we. We just we know that I used to the be a therapist stresses. and work in mental health, and it mental health rates, addiction centers, all of this. Like I mean, after the holidays, we were jammed. We were jammed because people, people don't deal with their shadows. They don't deal with their egos. We, <clears throat> and we're stuck with people we don't want to be stuck with, yeah. or that we're not used to being stuck with. Like kids, kids are home now, and I'm seeing all. It's interesting because like there's all these moms who are like. I'm getting my child on a homeschooling schedule and they're like, they're going in like Miss like, like Perky and they're excited and they're trying to get on their schedule and then they're like, here, like the five-year-old's not, not adhering to my schedule. I'm like, because you're a mom, you're not, you're not a teacher. You're not teacher. Right. You've you're never homeschooled and now all of a sudden your child's having to, and they're getting mad and they're getting angry. They're like, why won't he? He do what he does at school for me for and then and yeah and you're getting into fights and then then husband and wives who have never had to work in the same home and yeah <clears throat> you know now they're basically colleagues like you know and and I think like who's getting the tea like little things like who's getting the TV how much fucking toilet paper you're using what you're eating these little things like we look at and go oh well like you can just brush that off but when we're actually in the situation when we're we when we get to a reality place of like what we're actually doing if we can talk about like no i'll just be zen and i'll be like but when we actually get with another person and we're stuck our egos do rise this shadow that we talk about all the time on free spirit talk it rises and we have to if you've not done your work if you you've not practiced what you call the pause then things blow and things blow big Mm-hmm. Because it is this pressure cooker of like, like pressure, 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 and people are scared and people are fearful. And there's even, so many people that aren't working, and the income is has come to you know the majority yeah. of the United States has less than a thousand dollars in savings. Yep. You know, less than a thousand dollars in savings, and the average, <clears> you know, you look at what just a, a mortgage or a rent payment is on something. It's more than a thousand bucks for the majority of people, yep. right? And you add in a car payment and insurance and gas electric. and electric. And yes, water. there's all this talk Heat. of that there's stimulus checks coming of anywhere from $600 to $1,200. People who make more money will get more money. The people who make less money will get less money. And I'm like, that's really fair. You know, the people who make more money and, you know, and I would be classified as one of the people that make more money. And I'm going, yeah, but I also have money in reserve. So I have a little bit of buffer there. Where a lot of people that I know don't have, have the buffer. any buffer no, buffer, no buffer, and even if we put things off a while, like I, I, I just signed a petition that my daughter sent me but to kind of put things mm-hmm. off a little bit. But the thing is, is that that's all building up. Then it's still there. It still has to be paid. You know, like there's a, there, I, I heard something that once again, maybe it's Austin or something that said that they're not. Um, moving forward on any evictions until the end of the coronavirus. Well, that's great. So let's take this out 60 days. And in 60 days, you get evicted. When you, when you, have, it, yeah. when you have no job, all your resources no are gone. No and now it's like, all right, pay or quit. Yes. Wow, we are going to have like a massive amount of homeless situations and legal stuff going on. And guess what? More crime, more violence. All of this stuff, and it's just impacting a stress and anxiety. Yeah. I actually saw a couple of landlords, like people took pictures, landlords sending out letters going, Your rent is due on this date. You need to pay me now to make sure that you're gonna have a home to live in. I saw two two pictures on Facebook of like Facebook friends, and they're like, Look at this shit. Look at what my landlord just sent me saying saying your rent comes first before anything else. That's because they're dependent on it. And they're dependent on it too. And but it's this it's the stress. It's pressure. Uh-huh. It's pressure. And then then we have some single people who are alone and you know completely shut down. I know I was just talking to a few different clients 
who are single and, you know, they're sitting in their homes and they put themselves yeah. on self-quarantine, but also their jobs have said, no, you're working from home yeah. and they've never worked from home before. And then they're working from home and they're, you know, I was talking to one person it's and he was telling me, he's like, he's like, I've, he's like, I'm being highly productive. He's like, I'm getting up and I'm going to work earlier. I'm staying at work longer. And my lunch break, which was an hour, is now 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm just work, 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 work. And that's all fine and dandy on the front side of things because we can bury ourselves in our work and we can get lost in that. And that gives us that space to kind of forget about what's actually going on in the real world. But that only is going to last so long. At some point, that isolation and just that work driven mode is going to cause massive mental emotional issues and, and physical, physical issues too because guess what if we're just sitting there working and we're in stress it reduces our, our immune bodies system. are going to be it increases shut down. the cortisone levels so now all of this like the impact on our hearts and on the you know our ability to just excrete the um, dopamine and serotonin yeah. you know and all of the the stuff that helps us to relax. All the feel good chemicals. All of that is going to get squished because we are number one not getting sunshine because we're scared to even go out and take a walk at the park, mm -hmm. you know, or go out in our backyard. And we're we're not letting our families out there, you know. So everybody who is is really worried about that, like they're just inside and uh, yeah, anxiety. Oh my god. Exactly. So and some people don't have jobs right now, so they can't even inside. they can't well and they can't even bury themselves in work. And so it is this like, okay, I'm going to watch Netflix until I start thinking about my life. Right. And once I start thinking about my life, oh, I haven't done any of my personal growth work. I haven't looked at my, my shit. And lo and behold, now I have to sit with myself. Something that we as Americans, and not to speak for the world, we as Americans suck at. Just suck at Even if we are like, oh, we're going to meditate. Well, I meditate daily. There is a difference between having a meditation practice, having a yoga practice, and literally sitting with like really having to sit with self yeah you can get depressed it's one thing if you choose to put yourself into a 10-day vipassana retreat yep. of silence and you have just you vow 10 days of silence and you're not talking to, even though you got other people around you're not talking to them and that's what a 10-day mm -hmm. vipassana is about is that you go into 10 days of silence and it's a meditative state and you're going in and you're doing all this internal work it's 10 days and you're like at the end of 10 days you know, I'm done. And a lot of people don't even make it through the 10 days. They go, whoa, and they quit. They quit because they can't handle this right here. And they can't handle the silence. And they can't handle the fact that they, even though there are people around, that there's not the connection. And it really throws them into a tailspin of dealing with their crap and everything. And here, that's, that's by choice, though. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference from something that is from choice versus to something that is virtually mandated on us when our freedom has actually been taken away and i mean we have to also put it in place like we are still humans and we have other sh stuff going on in our lives like i just talked to a friend yesterday who has some ma had some massive depression going on prior because she has some really serious things happening in her world and she was like this is killing me now i'm stuck in the house in this situation and I can't like it's it's a pressure cooker it there's so much yeah so I'm like she was like I was already depressed I was already on the edge uh-huh and now I'm already on the edge and this happens and I talked to I've been because I many of you know I was an eating disorder therapist for years well guess what this is an awful situation for anybody who has ever struggled with any food anything because you go into this mode of of like, okay, like if you're a restrictive person and I'm just hitting on this mental illness, but there's lots of others, but like if you restrict your food, then you're going, oh my God, there's not going to be enough food. I just shouldn't eat. Or you're going, oh my God, I have all this binge food around me. Let me just binge it. Binge it. There's alcoholics that are like having to sit in the house with people who, who are drinking and they're stressed and like there's that going on. I think there's all our, our, all of our stuff is getting stirred right now. And so we really do have to take care. I think it comes down to we have to take care of each other and ourselves. Unfortunately, this pulls out either our best or our worst. And, you know, there's, I've read so much and, and listened to so many different people things of just that, that there is just like, as, as, as a world society, it is really showing 
the truth behind like how so many people operate. We can be all love and peace and I love my neighbor and I love my family. And until I, we get to this. Until freaking toilet paper breaks up your and relationship. And we go into scarcity. Right? And it's like, oh my goodness, just, you know, here, you take a role and I take a role and let's still be friends. Yeah. You know? Like, my are you going to let 200 my sheets rolls. of toilet paper break up a no. five, six year relationship? No. We won't. No. We'll share the freaking toilet paper. I'll go get the fucking washcloths and, and here's my washing machine. But the reality is, is that, you know, I, I was just like, man, I, my neighbor's on one side. Well, my daughter lives on one side. Your neighbor's, neighbor's on the other side. My daughter doesn't count as a neighbor. No. Like, we share everything. <laughs> we share everything. She was out there at 7 o'clock this morning trying to find toilet paper reporting back. Like, it's all gone. We're like, I just want one pack. Like, I, I was be happy with, like, six rolls, you know? Like, damn. Because you have, like, a two million people in your house. <laughs> because you have so many kids. I have kids, have and I have friends, kids. and my house is the hub. But I was just telling you, yeah. just, like, on the toilet paper. So here you go. Like, uh, two years ago almost, in my house, I had 15 people in my house mm -hmm. for about six months straight. And I kid you not, 15 people, small children, teenagers, men and women, we were all housing together for about six months. To have all, in other words, my kids moved back from Hawaii and and they came with extras and all of that. And it just was everybody going to mom's house, right? So I had all seven of my kids in my house, you know, plus extras. And it ended up being like, it was, it was a community potluck every single night. But guess what? We ended up, we had a lot of Plenty toilet of paper usage, right? So my three bathrooms were definitely being used. And I was just telling my guy last night, I said, you know, my power bill still never was horribly outrageous. And her and I were just talking this morning. And I said, you know, even at the, even at the height of that, I went to Costco and I bought one of the great big packs of toilet paper. And it lasted me about five or six weeks with 15 people in the house. And a lot of people that don't really look at, you know, conserving toilet paper, like five-year-olds. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like they don't care. They're, they're just right. like, and they're just like, right. They're, they're like, like, I'm learning how to wet my right, right now. Right. So, so I'm going to cat some days yeah. because, you know, like that. And it's like, and that is 15 people in a house and nobody was looking at conserving paper. No. But then we've got, we've got war breaking out in parking lots and in grocery stores, all this stuff, which is really showing our Scarcity. low level consciousness. Mm -hmm. And our fear and that we are so right now living in such a state of fear. And if we really want to fear something, you know, we look at, well, this is, this is a virus and it's dangerous and, you know, we're all going to die. That's what everybody's thinking. Meanwhile, let's. Now, why do we, why do we have to be number one? Holes? Why do we have to be a-holes the last few days of our life? That's my thing. Why I'm like, okay, if, you, if you're going to die, yeah, why do why we have, do we have be to be so jerks about, about the last few days of our life if that's the way we're going to choose to look at it? Number two, um, FYI, the coronavirus is a Not respiratory dying. virus. <sighs> respiratory. Do we know where the respiratory system is located? It is not located at our buttholes, okay? <laughs> That's not a respiratory system. Nope. It is not in our intestinal tracts, which leads to us needing this. Needing extra it's, that, yeah. No, no. You know, a respiratory system is up here. It's dealing with our breathing. I mean, if I eat this whole roll of toilet paper, it's not going to help with my breathing. You know, it's not, I mean, I could see like maybe a run on Kleenex. Kleenex, yeah. You know, to a degree. But then there's these things called hankies that you can wash that you can get multiple uses out of, you know, like old school, back to 1950, you go and use a freaking hanky. You know, there's really, there's zero reason. So it just, it shows, excuse me, but the stupidity of our culture right now and that we are so easily sidetracked when we are in a state of fear that we're missing the boat on everything and we're focusing in on wiping our butts instead yeah and the fear of not having enough for the end of days and i'm like really is that how you're going to leave the world well at least i died with 500 rolls of toilet paper but i cut down every single other person while doing it and yet i bet you the majority of people who have gone after the toilet paper or after the children's tylenol or, or wiping, after baby the baby wipes, wipes or after the female hygiene products, or the diapers, 
or the paper towels, or the or the clean up, the Kleenex, or all or the hand sanitizer, in the all world. the hand sanitizer on the planet, all of the soap on the planet, all of these things that yes, I get that everybody's scared to death of Without catching a bug, and yeah, catching a bug, and I'm not gonna make light that yes, it's a bug. It has killed less than nine thousand people in the world to date. All right, that's that's fine. I get it. It's real. It's real. The bug is real, but. But are we really going to let our fear cause us to go, you know, this is this is more important? And then these people stand there and go, I'm a good person. I believe in God. Mm -hmm. I'm a good spiritual person. I'm a giver. I'm a people pleaser. I think of my neighbor. I love my family. Like give me my toilet paper. paper. Toilet paper is the breaking point. This is like I, I'm I'm telling you, if you are one of the people out there that has gone and filled your closet or more with toilet paper. If you're one of those 500% more users of toilet paper out there, according to that one Seriously. Like, check yourself. Check yourself because this is, you want to see where Satan's rising up. It's right here in in the white gold. Because (laughs) this is like, it is. Yeah, you're right. This is where we're seeing our utter darkness. This is the demonic thing of our time right now. Because this is pulling out our inner demons. This is making it where, like, you can preach all damn day long that you're a good person and that you care about the world and you care about your neighbors and your family. And you can walk along and with your nose step at, stuck up in the air and all that good stuff. You're not a fucking good person. Excuse my French, not really. But if you are one of the toilet paper hoarders or the baby Tylenol or the diaper or the baby wipes, or anything, Maybe like formula, anything like that. I mean, yes, all like this stuff. I'm, I'm like, um, for what? I know what people are doing. It's all, but it's like, here comes the black market of, you know, my mom when she was a little girl in Nazi Germany, this and grew is... up. That this is the kind of stuff that happened, and she was, you know, six, seven, eight years old, and went down on the black market and would trade. Um, she would get because my grandmother was a seamstress, mm-hmm. and so she would do. Um, the seeming of the suits and stuff for officers of all nations. She had quite the clientele. Mm-hmm. And so she worked with American soldiers. She worked with the French Foreign Legion. She worked, of course, with, with Germany. She worked with all these different people. Black and they would bring her stuff, and she would do all their seamstress work, and then they would go, and here they are. Where is it at? <laughs> all right, so they would be down there at the black market and, you know, seven, eight years old trading it. And here we are in a time, like I said, on Etsy right now, you can get 10 rolls of toilet paper for $46 plus shipping. And, you know, what we have is we have, because people are so stuck in their scarcity mode, that they are like, oh, I can make, I can can make money. I can make money on the white gold. I can make money on the baby Tylenol. And then we have infants dying. That are hungry and hungry. We have people who actually need, need these different things, these resources, and they can't find them. You know, even if martial law goes into place across the nation, even if martial law goes in, that we still will have the right to go to the grocery store and to purchase the things that we need. We will still have the right to go to CVS and to, you know, to the pharmaceutical places Mm -hmm. and to get Tylenol and to get cough medicine and cough drops, the white gold, fruits, vegetables, all this kind of stuff, water, these basic things, we're going to have the ability still to do it. We're not going to be able to just go randomly. You know, like some of the stuff that we do normally is taken away because martial law means all of our rights are gone. The Constitution is not null and void. But, but even if the Constitution goes null and void, guess what we can still go by? Toilet paper. And if everybody just did what, what they normally do, went about their business and just did what they normally do. Maybe stock up your pantry and your freezer yeah. just because, you know, like I New lived York's up in, home. I'm from the Tahoe area and snowstorms come in and, and it's from New York do, where, where snow you stock up your pantry and your freezer. And, and I have always been like, my pantry's always stocked. My freezer's always stocked. It doesn't much matter, you know, on that. But to go to the extreme levels, now we are becoming the darkest variety of ourselves. And in it's truth, our dark there's side. nothing, like, you want to even take out, like, products out of it, like, people are just not being even nice and smiling. You know, I was at, so I went, I had to go to the store because I actually was out of something. I wasn't just 
I forget what it was, but I went to a store like two days ago and a woman, um, a woman like half tripped and I went to go and she was like, she like, I was like, are you okay, ma'am? And she's like, <clears throat> like almost like, how dare you get so close to me? And I'm like, you almost fell on your face. I literally was just like, I did my normal human thing of like, oh my God. God. Like severely get hurt. So, and she just was like, and I was like, okay. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like, I was just trying to help. You know, we, we just can't, we can't even like look somebody in the eye and smile and like, you know, how about like there, that costs nothing. That is taking nothing away from, from anybody else. A smile, a, a good morning, a, a something that like a checking on a friend that doesn't take anything away from you. No. And smile is not going to hurt anybody. And you know, good day comment with a smile and a little bit. Giving yeah. a sheet. <laughs> oh my God. It's just like the out. <laughs> Giving a sheet. Well, really taking it. Back in the 90s when Seinfeld was still on, I show my age here, there was an episode where Elaine, the main female on Seinfeld, uh -huh. have you ever watched Seinfeld? Yeah, you're too young for that shit. I'm not that <laughs> much younger than you. <laughs> Seinfeld. I love Seinfeld. No, so Seinfeld, Elaine, the main woman on Seinfeld, she is in the bathroom stalls and she goes in there and she's, you know, she does her thing, she does her thing right? She pees. And she goes to get that, and there's no toilet paper in her stall. Mm -hmm. And there's a woman in the stall next to her. So she goes, excuse me, could you spare two squares? And the woman goes, no. And she's sitting there, and I mean, she comes back, and the whole premise of Seinfeld is that they all get together in Seinfeld's apartment a lot, and okay. they talk about this funny stuff that's going on. And so she comes in, and she's just like, you're not going to believe this. I'm in the blah, 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 wherever she's yeah. at. And she goes through this whole thing. And she's like, and you know, and all I did was, can you spare two squares? When is it not that you can't spare two <laughs> squares? Just two squares. You can't just spare two squares. I'm like, that is so us today. Like, this is like. We cannot spare two squares. No, I cannot spare two squares. No, this is my two squares. Actually, it's your two squares. It's technically my two squares. It's technically two squares. But you can have my two squares. Okay, I have toilet paper. I know you have toilet paper. And I don't have a closet full. No, this is toilet paper I have. I'm like, this I have toilet nine paper rolls I have. of toilet paper, and I'm, I mean, like, I know, like, I, if I see toilet paper, I will grab four, five, four to six rolls, you know, because that's about all I'll need to make it through for a few, you know, with the nine that I have. But I'm like, this I'm still is working on the Costco run I did like two months ago. I'm like, that is crazy. That is crazy. But it's this pressure cooker. And so, so just look at, I, what I do, we do, how do we prevent the pressure cook? How do we not cook ourselves in today's pandemic? So first off, like, because I, I think if you are stuck with, in a family situation, if you are feeling like, like I'm angry at, like you're feeling this stuff, I think taking a break from each other, like. Even like if you are quarantined in your house with the fam with your family going, okay, this room is the quiet room. There's yeah. like no talking in this room. Like yeah. we're gonna set like a boundary here of like if you need a break, if you need to get away, if you need to just have quiet, this is the room to go do it in. Mm -hmm. There's no talking in that room. Like that room just is for people who need space. And then also to have that socialization, I think for individuals, like really just thinking outside of yourself and going, I'm gonna call that friend, I'm gonna text them, I'm just gonna go, hey, just thinking about you. Like, just having some connection. And this is really where we do need to communicate and go, hey, I need a moment, hey, I need a break, hey, I need some help, hey, I need some support right now, or hey, I need just some space right now. I need I need some, some space, I need, but you, you, we have to communicate. The more we're communicating, then the less likely we're going to be to have these massive big blow-ups. Domestic if you're in a violent situation already and you're one of those thousands of individuals out there that are in a domestic situation or have child abuse happening in your house and that you're scared to death because because of everything that's going on, know that there is, you know, the, the crisis lines still are available. Yeah. They are doing their hardest work to try to accommodate. And if nothing else, if you really are in a violent situation, I mean, like, 
I heard that the police are not even dealing with anything that's not a felony level or more, okay. which is really, really sad because that, well, guess what felony is in a domestic violence situation? Hmm. Somebody's <sighs> taking a gun to yeah. somebody else. Yeah, and I just read that report to you on the yeah. domestic violence site that, that people are getting shot through doors. Like, there's like, they're, they're having just like numerous cases of violence that is going on. It's absolutely ridiculous. And this is like, this is the, these are the untold stories and the true epidemic that, that is happening in our time right now. And I think that the media is not going to cover it. Mm-hmm. The media is not going to cover it. It's going to just make light of that stuff. It's going to get washed to the side in the face of a virus that FYI, 20% of us will get and that the average death age of this virus is 79.5. So we are the average age of death is 79 mm-hmm. years old. And they have at least three other issues going on. So people with high blood pressure, with asthma, and with heart issues are that are over the age of 60 are the ones that are actually getting it. Getting it. And are actually immune. getting it. If you have a strong immune system, it's gonna act like a, a regular cold in your system for the most part. There is really no reason to battle the 65, 70 year old woman at the grocery store for four rolls of the white gold. There is no reason to abuse your wife or your children in this Take a walk. Because right now, most of us are not, actually. Do you know what boosts your immune system? Sunshine. We need vitamin D. Vitamin D increases our immune system. It also allows us to have proper functions of chemicals so Mm -hmm. that our emotional level is at a stable level. The vitamin D helps prevent depression. Mm -hmm. It helps lower stress and anxiety. And natural vitamin D is what we need. 20 minutes of sun exposure on the skin is what we actually need every single day. Walking, it gets the blood flowing. It puts toxins, hydration, hydration, water, limit the toxins that you're putting into your body. Fresh air, guess what? Disease does not really live in cold, in cold. And a lot of our country right now has a lot of cold going on. Like even here in Texas where we're typically balmy and moderate temperatures. It's pretty chilly. It's been really chilly. Like I took a walk yesterday and I was like, like, oh, it's like I probably needed, you know, more on than what I had. I just had a sweatshirt on because it was gorgeous out and I wanted that 20 minutes of sunshine, you know. But it's those kinds of things. There's ways, there's so much evidence that is showing that there are holistic ways of preventing or combating the COVID-19 among many other things. And I encourage anybody who catches this to actually go and research the numbers. Like really truly look at the numbers. Look at how many people have died just this year from the flu. Look at how many people have died just this year from car accidents. How many people have died from cancer? How many Mm -hmm. people have died from diabetes? How many people have died from, you know, pneumonia? How many people have died from heart attacks? How many people have died from um, alcohol related stuff? And then do the numbers as to how many people have actually died from COVID-19 and just get real with that. And then do a little bit of research around what the science is actually behind this stuff. Because if you can reduce down your fear and get into a logical mindset around it, it's gonna mean that we're not gonna be killing each other over Toilet paper, paper. or even just, yeah. If you think that you're a smart person, if you count yourself as one of the smart individuals out there, then take the 15 minutes to do the research and to educate yourself instead of buying into just what the media is telling us. And breathe, people. Let's breathe. Let's breathe. And let's, I know this is super cliche right now, but like, let's just love and support each other. Like, we all are, like, there's a stress and an energy over this country so like instead let you be one of the people who actually rises up stronger from this from a energetic perspective and not one of those people who who dives down deep deeper and actually creates more karma for lack of a better word yeah yeah or yes, negative really karma can. i mean as i think that's really important for i mean all the abusive people out there are not number one not going to watch us number two don't give a rat's rear end about it and don't catch themselves so they don't even think that they're doing anything bad. It's, you know, the world is against them. Um, but for the rest of us out there who is not typically in, in abusive situations or 
an abuser by nature, realize that we can also be pushed. And yes. that, you know, having the seclusion, the isolation, and the stress, just the stress. And right now what we have is we have mass stress. So as a world community, the whole world is stressed, which is changing the whole consciousness of the world. That's that pressure cooker that we're talking yeah. about because it is a mass consciousness of stress and fear that is going on, which is causing delusion to occur. Mm -hmm. And in that delusional state is where we get very reactive. So even the best of us can become extremely reactive yeah. and act our nature. And that's where we need to really check, our check ourselves right now, check our do the work right now, set up a game plan. Like I posted on my Facebook page, you know, isolation goals is what I called it mm -hmm. or something like that. And I was going through and I'm like, you know, Here's I'm going I'm I'm to exercise every day. I'm going to meditate every day. I'm going to take the time to clean all those nooks and crannies that I've been ignoring for the last year. My master closet, I just have not paid much attention to. I need to go through it. I want to clean up my clothes and freshen things up. I've got a book that I'm actually writing and working on. Yeah, I've got different things that I want to do for my clients that I want to do. There's things that I want to do for my children. Set up a routine. Audio. Set up a routine. I, I, I've been like, no, like even, and I'm not really in isolation. I have self clients and stuff coming, but yeah, me too. But, but as far as I'm like, no, like I'm going to get, if we get to that space, I'm like, no, I'm still going to get up. I'm still going to do my yoga practice. I'm still going to get dressed. I'm still going to like, like get some schedule, get some routine going. Even if that, and that schedule doesn't have to be all oh, work. That could be like, like watch a movie at 12, 12 to to two, do this, have it's lunch. It's actually really important that it's not all work. Yeah. Because the work keeps us in that state of illusion. It keeps mm -hmm. us separated emotionally from everything. And the more we're emotionally separated, now we've created this armor toward actually feeling. Yes. So much like we understand that the more, you know, our kids play games that are high in violence, that they then are not necessarily, they're not emotionally connected to violent situations that actually occur in the world. So they don't have any heart towards it. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't feel they're any numbed sympathy. Out. They're desensitized. They're numbed out. They're desensitized because of the games that they're playing. And that is the exact same thing that we are numbing ourselves out because we're creating this wall of separation. And it's not just the physical wall of separation that's occurring. Mm -hmm. It is the emotional wall of separation that is actually really yeah. happening because we're no, if we can, if we can literally kill over a roll of toilet paper, we have emotionally separated ourselves from our humanness. Yes. And that is a very dangerous place to be. Yes. That is the true pandemic that should be made aware. And on that note, I feel like that was a, like that was good. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna copy that into yeah. written right. Seriously, out. seriously, that was good. So, yeah, yeah, we're all in this together, guys. We really are. So, do you have any announcements? Uh, no. Yeah, neither do I. Because all our events were canceled. Yeah, all of our so events were canceled. I keep watching have, us. I have the well. I'm doing the COVID. Um, um, keeping your relationships strong and your wealth, health, health, bleh, I can't talk health, health. now. Your relationships, health, and wealth strong during this pandemic. I was going to teach it yesterday, but I've decided to push it out a week longer and just allow more people to join into that. So that will be a live training on Facebook. And I've got a live training that will be coming out. I'm just not ready to announce it. Yeah, yet. and I've got my biggest nerve group coaching that I'm going to be coming out with, which is going to focus in on it's actually a beautiful time for me to bring this out. I realized that this is like I've been piecing it together and working on it, but the biggest nerve for anybody who's familiar with it or not, really the main point of this is so that we can reduce our anxiety, reduce depression, and to become more embodied. So all of this armoring that I was just talking about, when we really, when our vagus nerve is not in active status, we could call it, what that does is that prevents us from feeling in so many different ways, but it does increase our stress level, increases our anxiety level, and causes a lot of inflammation in the body. I guess what inflammation does to our immune system. You got drops it. it, drops it way down, causes a lot more pain, causes a lot of other health issues. So I'm going to be um, putting out this next week, you will see come out a group coaching for that. Uh, just to give everybody, guess what, home practice as to how to work with your vagus nerve to reduce anxiety, reduce inflammation and depression, 
and to boost your ability to actually embody yourself in the room. And I'm still taking one-on-one -on -one clients. I'm still doing my online coaching. Still, so there's yeah. just, there's no reason not. Our world is pretty much the same, yeah. except our local group events are on not, hold. Yeah, they're they're, they're on, on hold. hold. They're on hold. They'll be postponed. So. Yeah. So yeah, you can find me at AllisonBill.net. You can find, you can find this find crazy one at out of her house with two rolls of toilet paper. No, Go for it. Fake my for your toilet paper. <laughs> so keep your toilet paper. You can find her at KendallWilliams.com. Thank you for joining you us. I'm going to take that right there. Like here. I'm going to do this. And then you can take this. All right. Screenshot that one. And that can be the cover for this um, free spirit talk. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Bye, guys. We love you.